Today we're on Windows Server 2008 Enterprise and we want to log in and look at configuring permissions at the share level and network level in Active Directory. So log into Pirates as administrator with administrative privileges. And for what we're doing, at least, you know, for the time being, we will require administrator privileges. Um, if we had logged in as somebody else, we could right-click and select Run as Administrator. But since we already have those privileges, we're just going to go right into Active Directory Users and Computers. Um, one of the first things I would do if you're doing, you know, going in here for the first time, I have Advanced Features checked, but that's not enabled by default. So you would see this on your first install. And I want you to just notice a few things. I'm going to right-click on Super Spies, and all of these organizational units are treated like folders. But notice there's no security tab here. I can't see ACES on the DACL, access control entries on the discretionary access control list. But if I enable advanced features, and then I right click on Super Spies, notice now there's a security tab. And in this way I can edit ACES on the DACL. Another thing, uh, n another feature that goes with advanced features, one of Microsoft's new features we'll take a look at is um, protection, uh, basically OU deletion protection. And we'll do that. Let's create an OU here. Notice this checkbox, protect container from accidental deletion. By default it's checked. I could uncheck it and it wouldn't be enabled, but it's, it's a good idea. It's just kind of like setting write protect on a secure digital card or a disk. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a child object. And again, protect container from accidental deletion. So now I have two objects here. Now, if I were to go and delete that object, properties, there's nothing here that would seem to indicate that deletion protection is on that object. So I go and I delete it, and then all of a sudden it tells me I don't have sufficient privileges or the object is protected from accidental deletion. Now, I do have privileges, so it's protected. Why can't I see it? And how do I unprotect it? How, you know, so I can clean up my Active Directory. Well, again, go back to View, Enable Advanced Features, go down to your organizational unit, and right-click on it. And now, in addition to the Security tab, you'll see the Object tab, and there you can uncheck Protect Object from Accidental Deletion. And when you do that, you can just right-click and delete, and it's gone. Now, something else I want to show you, I'm going to leave Advanced View on, make another organizational unit. Again, we'll just call it child. Same name, but it'll have a different SID. What if I, you know, want to delete a parent and the child object is protected? I'll go to the object tab, I'll uncheck protect object from external deletion. Watch us. Now all of a sudden it tells me object parent contains other objects. Are you sure you want to delete the object parent and all of the objects it contains? So I would say yes, use delete subtree server control. That kind of conveniently just wipes out everything under that parent object. So it's kind of a nice new protection, nice new feature in uh, 2008. Okay, now that we're in Active Directory Users and Computers, um, let's go ahead and create a hierarchy. So we'll use an organizational unit structure. Now you can use domains and subdomains, but Microsoft recommends using as few domains as possible. So, I mean, basically with an organizational unit, you kind of get what you would get with a subdomain, a division of authority and delegation and permissions, sort of a separation there. So it's a good way to organize your network in Active Directory around the way that a company is structured. Now, probably from your reading, you remember that companies can be structured by location or by function if they're broken into departments, or they can be in sort of a hybrid structure, combination of location and function or function and location. We're going to do a hybrid structure for super spies, and this will be location and function. So we're going to have three locations, and here we'll create the parent OUs. So we'll have the northern hemisphere, excuse me, and let's, <coughs> let's go ahead and add the southern hemisphere. And we'll get super high tech and we will add a lunar base. Our super secret spy lunar base on the moon that no one knows about except us and, and they. And only they know who they are. So here we have parent OUs 
and they themselves are child objects of super spies, but they're nested inside, and we're going to create child objects, and we'll, you know, we, we structured it by location, now within each location we're going to structure it by function, so by department. And in this case, all of our, you know, our spy groups will have a top agents department, and we will also have a research department, where we develop cool things like exploding pens and uh, laser watches and other cool spy stuff. And we will have enemy agents that we need to keep track of, top agents, and also the, for our new recruits, um, trainees. And so again, we're broken down by location and function. These are child OUs, this is a parent OU, and also Super Spies is a parent OU that contains all of these, sort of our whole company, so to speak. So again, I just want to create the same structure here. I'm going to say new organizational unit, trainees, and new organizational unit, research, and I'm going to go new organizational unit, top agents, and new organizational unit, enemy agents. And we'll go to Lunar Base, and in Lunar Base, um, there are no enemy agents that we have to worry about on Lunar Base. So we're just going to have, and there are really no top agents there, so we'll just have research. And here will be a little bit different by job description or function. So we'll have research, and we will have surveillance. That's how you spell surveillance, I, I wouldn't know. Okay, so now we have our organizational unit structure with our parent use and our child use. Um, we're going to need some administrators to administer each location. And if you broke this down into subdomains, in your FQDN you could have northernhemisphere.pyrex.org, southernhemisphere.pyrex.org. You could set up system administrators that way, but we've broken it down by organizational unit. We want to use a single domain and take advantage of you know, a, a, a tremendous, tremendous cost savings in terms of simplicity and, and fewer resources for our network. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll make our administrator. We'll say new and user. And this one will be NH admin. NH admin. And give him a password. And there he is, there's NH at men. And we're going to create SH at men for Southern Hemisphere. And let's go ahead and create another user here. And this will be Lunar Admin. But wouldn't you like that job? Then again, maybe it'd be a lonely job. Unless you could take your loved ones with you somehow. Hey, we'll be a super secret spy organization with a family plan. So now I have three different amends here. Let's look at different ways. There's two basic ways that you can delegate authority over an OU to an administrator for that respective location or function. You can use the first method, which is delegate control wizard, and we'll run that. And we just want to add, in this case, NH admin, northern hemisphere admin. And you can go with these options, but this isn't really going to give him enough power to be a full, we want, we want him to be a full blown total, you know, independent, self-sufficient administrator for the Northern Hemisphere OU. So instead of choosing this, we're going to choose create a custom task to delegate. We're going to go over here and we want to say this folder, existing objects in this folder, and creation of new objects in this folder. Anything that's nested inside of it, any child objects, we want him to have power over or the ability to administer. We're going to give him full control over everything to create child objects. Very important so he can create sub OUs or child OUs within his parent OU structure. User accounts, groups, whatever he needs to do in his location, he should be able to do without having to bug headquarters, right? Without having to, you know, bug us.